Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. In this video, we'll be getting into one of my favorite knots and one I rarely use in industrial rope access work. And it's the bowline. Let's get into it. So just recently, Alpine Savvy on Instagram, link will be in the description below, contacted me for a collaboration on how to tie the perfect figure of eight knot. And the gist of that post was similar as to the video I did. You can watch it up there about how to tie the perfect figure of eight knot. And that's all about where is the load strand in the knot, on the inside or the outside. So one is a little bit easier to undo. And if you want to find out which one, go check out that video. So he made a post about it, we collaborated on it, and I, because the Alpine's savvy audience is mainly from climbing, recreational or alpine, alpine or rock climbing or things like that, a lot of the comments were, why don't you just use a bowline? And this is a very good knot, but it has some serious drawbacks that I do not like for rope access work, and that's why we hardly ever use it. So in this video, I will first show you how to tie it or how I tie it and then we'll get into some of the drawbacks of it and the advantages. So, how to tie it. I have my anchor point here, I put the rope through, I go with my thumb down, I grab the rope and go up, and I get this little, I'm always confused about the bites and the loops and the standing and the running ends and all that stuff, so I make like a loop, and I go back down, I'm gonna make a slip knot, and the slip knot needs to be with the piece that it's coming from the bottom. So right now, if I would pull this towards the anchor point, it cannot slip through and the knot will not slip out. And if I pull down, it will slip out. That, may, that means that it was the right way. So I, I, with my thumb down, I go up, make the loop and go back in and grab it. Now, I have my slip knot here, like this or like this. I have my slip knot here and I need to put this end through the knot, but intuitively, intuitively we would go through this side. And if I would finish off the knot now, I end up with something that's slightly different than the classical bowline. And there's a lot of conversations in all kind of Reddit forums and all that stuff about what is the bowline. For me, this is called the Bullen knoop, and the one I'm going to show you is called the Paalsteek, and the Paalsteek is the bowline in Dutch. All right. So, intuitively we would go in through here, but we want to go in from the front. And then I just flip the knot over, and I end up with a bowline, where the tail end of the rope is on the inside of the knot. And if you would pass it through the other way around, then the tail end would end on the other side. Both strong, both good, nothing unsafe about them. We can get into the minute details of ring loading and which one will slip quicker and blah, 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 all that stuff. But remember that all those things happen at huge loads that we should never be experiencing in our systems. I'm talking rope access. I know a little bit about the climbing world because that's where I got into the rope access from. But those happen like with the alpine butterfly bend, basically, to tie knots together. Yes, it slips, but at like how, what, 10, 12, 15, 16 kn, not something we should be encountering any day, depending on the size of the rope, the state of the, the, state of the rope, all that things. Anyway, I digress. This is the bowline we want to see right now. So, very good knot. If I tighten it properly, I know the tail end is a bit long, but that's not, not, not too bad. So right now it's tight, set and dressed, really good. But if I stand here and talk like this, it will undo itself. I can already move it. So it doesn't take that much to undo itself. That means that if we use the bowline, that we always need to secure it in some way. So when people say, why don't you just use the bowline? Okay, good knot but I can't climb on this because if the wind gets my rope and it starts going like this, maybe the knot undoes itself. So I need to do something different. So a lot of people tie it off with a double, yeah, tie it off with a double fisherman's, one, two, and then go through like so, 
If you want to know how to tie the double fisherman's knot, watch the video up there. I'm on the wrong way to the camera. Yeah, there. So now if the knot would start slipping, this double fisherman runs into the other side of the knot and it cannot slip through so the knot is secured. There's another way of tying it and that's one I really like. And then we call it the uh, Yosemite bowline. So how I do that is when the rope, I, I, I work backwards on this one. So this is the part that I want to follow through. So that means that this rope needs to go on the other side in this case. And then I'm gonna follow it through down here. So now it's next to each other in here. And nice, neat and parallel. Let me set it. Nice, neat and parallel. I have a beautiful Yosemite bowline where this running end or tail end is secured and it will take a lot more minutes of me standing here before the nut undoes itself. I like it, the way it looks, it's really good. So that's two ways of tying it and there's another one that is really good and really strong and I once broke a 15 or 14 mil super static rope with a brake extent of 100 km and I could still take the knot out. It didn't break in the knot for some reason. So how I'm not going to explain this one, I'm just going to show it quickly if you want me to make a video of how to tie this knot, leave a comment in the, in the comment section. So now I have a sort of a double bowline, two loops, secured, very good knot as well. So those are three variations of the bowline, but I always need to do something extra. So you're actually tying sort of two knots. Why is this not a good knot for rope access purposes? Well, because first of all, it's hard to recognize if I would Go back to a fairly simple version of the original bowline. Let me just redress it a little bit like this. Right now, it's easy to see, it's easy to recognize. We all know this, but if I go here, it will be harder for you to recognize. But if I take a figure, of double figure of eight or a figure of eight on a bite, I can look up and that must be 10 meters away. Perfect figure of eights, perfect figure of eights. The trainers here, they know how to tie the figure of eights. They're all nice, neat, tidy, perfectly dressed, so they're easy to recognize. So that's a very big advantage. In rope access, we're not working with climbers. We're often working with craftsmen who learn to climb. The, the climbing trick is just a way, a means of access, accessing the work site. So we keep the knots simple and basic, and this does not undo itself. Yeah, in, in 500 cycles of this maybe. But this is already loose, five cycles. So easy to recognize, harder to recognize. Now, one comment I get from recreational climbers is, yeah, but why don't you just go over there to inspect the knots? Just imagine I need to work underneath a heli deck and there is an, a 15 meter eight climb involved where I need to drop down. So I have my level two, he goes eight climbs over, he ties his figure of eight knots. We're gonna have a lot of noise now. He ties his figure of eights knot, he rigs them, and I can inspect them from 15 to 20 meters away. I even have like a mono, like a little binoculars, like a monocular, is it's called, so I can inspect it. If I would have to climb over there, then I put myself in a dangerous situation where I might not be able to be rescued from, and I will put my rope tags into situations where I know I can rescue them. So that's the mindset we are working from. We need to be able to rescue someone. So if I would need to climb over there and rig it, I might as well do the work, but who's going to rescue me? So if I can inspect this from a distance, that's very valuable to us. So it's a good knot, it's easy to recognize, it's strong, they're all like 50%-ish. That, uh, that's the main thing, recognizable, easy to tie, fairly easy to undo, and it, but this, it's harder to recognize, super easy to undo, and you always need to tie two knots. So those are the, the few reasons why in rope access we hardly use this. Can you use it? Yes, of course, but like with everything we do, we need to risk assess it, all right? Now, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to always be notified of a new upload. 
If you want to support the channel, you can head over to the Patreon. Link will be in the description. You sign up and for every video I release, educational content I release, uh, you buy me a cup of coffee. And if we get those numbers up, I can approach friends and then I can do bigger and better collaborations and provide you guys with the information you need to know to work safely about new devices, old devices, things that are happening in the industry, competitions and all that stuff. All right, so subscribe to the channel. That's it for the bowline. If you want to see different versions or a better explanation or how to do the Yosemite or the, the double one, I forgot the name for a moment, well, just ask away which one you want and I'll ask, make a dedicated video for you. I will see you in the next one. Stay connected. Peace.